Welcome back to a special extended Independence Day themed edition of All In. I'm Chris Hayes. The case against the Trump Organization and its chief financial officer, Alan Weisberg, is at this point just charges and an indictment. They're allegations. Obviously, it's not the sum total of what prosecutors know, and we haven't read the defense response. But if the allegations in the indictment are true in the context they are presented, it sure seems like a pretty black and white picture of tax fraud. Not some, you know, incidental bookkeeping error, but a plan that was systematically engineered over the years to create an alternate hidden means of compensation that evaded taxes. You know, historically, the smoking gun of tax fraud, any fraud, is the classic two sets of books, right? Anytime a business or an individual has two sets of financial records, you have likely found fraud because why would you need two, right? There's one set of numbers. They're the numbers. But the cornerstone of fraud is telling one set of people, like tax collectors, lies about your finances while you are keeping another accurate set of records hidden. And in order to keep those lies straight, you need two sets of books. That is exactly what prosecutors allege they have evidence of here. Just one example of many. Prosecutors say, quote, the payment of tuition expenses for Weisselberg's family members constituted employee compensation and taxable income to Alan Weisselberg and was treated as part of Weisselberg's annual compensation in internal records maintained by the Trump Corporation. However, the indirect compensation in the form of tuition payments was not included on Weisselberg's W-2 or otherwise reported to federal, state, or local tax authorities. And no income taxes were withheld by the corporate defendants in connection with the tuition payments. So the Trump board have their own records. How much are we paying Alan Weisselberg? And they said one thing, well, we're paying him this and part of that payment or tuition payments. Well, both Weisselberg and the company told that tax authority something else. These charges against the Trump organization, the CFO, were, of course, announced last week. And since then, um, Donald Trump has been out doing a thing that he, he really benefited from throughout the years, particularly in the presidency, which is publicly stating his crimes so they would not be secret scandals that were uncovered. Remember, 2016, famously in front of cameras, in a microphone, asked for Russia to hurt his political opponent. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Russia, please hack my opponent. Russia did uh, do that. And after his call uh, pressuring Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden became public knowledge, he then stood on the White House lawn and did it publicly, called for both Ukraine and China to investigate the Bidens. Well, he's doing it again, kind of, arguing at a rally in Sarasota, Florida over the weekend that, look, maybe he committed some crimes, but come on, people like us are not supposed to get prosecuted. They go after good, hardworking people for not paying taxes on a company car. Company car. You didn't pay tax on the car or a company apartment. You used an apartment because you need an apartment because you have to travel too far where your house is. You didn't pay tax or education for your grandchildren. I don't even know. Do you have to? But does anybody know the answer to that stuff? OK, but they indict people for that. Weird how the line about using the company apartment because you live so far away from the office doesn't quite land with the crowd. Meanwhile, his family was lying about the scope of the case and arguing it was all about, quote, fringe benefits to sympathetic hosts on Trump TV. They'll go after somebody after fringe employment benefits. Mm. Is that really what the D.A. is focused on is little girls are getting shot in the middle of Times Square? Mm. They'll go after a corporate vehicle and a corporate apartment. They want to go after the CFO of the Trump Organization for free parking or something like that. The best they could come up with was a corporate car for the CFO of the Trump Organization. They spent millions of dollars. They reviewed three million documents. Okay, countless number of grand jury hours, countless number of witnesses, and they got a guy because he got a corporate car and didn't declare it on his tax return. Okay, keep in mind here, amidst all this, right? They're not saying you have it all wrong at all. This is argument saying, how dare you prosecute someone who is evading taxes on millions of dollars in income? That's nothing to us. People get prosecuted and go to jail for this all the time. I have news for you. You can ask baseball great Pete Rose, who spent five months in prison after failing to report income for memorabilia sales, autograph signings, personal appearances. Singer Lauren Hill, who served three months in prison for failing to pay over a million dollars in taxes. You can ask former Republican Congressman Michael Grimm, who went to prison after he was accused of underreporting wages and revenue while running an Upper East Side restaurant, essentially keeping, yes, two sets of records. That sound familiar? 
Now, look, there is an inescapable political context to all this, because people on both sides of prosecution are politicians. Everyone knows who Donald Trump is. But it's also the case that if what is alleged is true, the politics should not matter to the prosecution. Law professor Daniel Hemel, I thought, got this right when he wrote, being connected to a controversial political figure shouldn't send you to jail. It shouldn't get you off the hook either. David K. Johnston is a Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative journalist whose reporting has prompted 15 tax crime prosecutions, author of The Making of Donald Trump. His latest column on the prosecution of the Trump Borg is titled Trump, One Law for Hungry Pizza Thieves, Another for Me. And he joins me now. Um, David, I guess let's start with this idea of the background context. You know, I think the argument that that Trump and his like are trying to make is like, this is ridiculous. No one ever gets nailed for this. But I've, as a reporter, covered people getting nailed for less than this. What, what, what say you? Well, we don't prosecute very many tax crimes in this country. Uh, 440 cases were actually accepted for prosecution by the Justice Department last year, according to the newest IRS data. A country of 330 million people, 440 is not very many cases. Uh, that said, many of these, uh, these are legal source cases, which is what applies here. This isn't about drug dealing or uh, bribery. Um, having said that, uh, the argument that, gee, this is nothing, $1.76 million is 34 years of income to the typical American worker, according to the latest data from Social Security. That's 30, 34 years of working. But you don't have to report income on it. Well, gee, I, I wish I hadn't had to report for the last 34 years what I made. Right, exactly. And there's also, I mean, the, the, the sort of two sets of books part of this is intriguing to me because it speaks to some they have actual tangible evidence, right, that this was a fraudulent enterprise. It also makes you wonder what what else they have access to. Well, interestingly, you know, Alan Weiselberg didn't get a raise for a number of years, which says a lot about Donald Trump, that he doesn't take good care of his CFO. Uh, but keeping two sets of books, as you said, is the classic indication of a fraud. And I've said from the very beginning, this is a garden variety tax fraud case. And you'll notice there's no denying what's going on. I do think right. the most interesting thing that's been said so far is what Donald said at his rally Saturday night. I mean, does anybody know uh, what the law is here? <laughs> Donald Trump claims to be the greatest expert on taxes in the history of the world. It's also the case, I have to say, uh, that everyone knows. Everyone knows. this. I mean, if you are compensated uh, by your employer with perks like that, you have to report his income. This is a, a very obvious and basic thing. And obviously, Alan Weisselberg knew that. Obviously, I think the Trump people probably knew that. Obviously, everyone in the organization knew, knew it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone lengths to, such lengths to hide it, as alleged. Right. And, what, and the next question to ask is, OK, who else has not yet been indicted who could be indicted? Now, there's an unindicted co-conspirator in the indictment. Uh, he very likely is Jeff Connie, who was brought before the grand jury and testified. And under New York state law, if you come before a grand jury, you have immunity, transactional immunity for whatever you testify about. He's the controller of the organization and logically would be a person involved in this criminal scheme. What do you think um, the the sort of stakes are here? Just zooming out for a second past this, because we started with you talking about how few tax crimes get uh, prosecuted. And one of the sort of themes of the Trump era to me is how much <laughs> um, wrongdoing has gone undeterred and uninvestigated and unprosecuted at the highest levels of American life for so long, and Trump being the kind of ultimate manifestation of that if you just let people get away with things forever? Well, we just reported at DC Report that your odds, if you made $10 million or more of having a completed audit in 2019 were one in 700, down from one in 20, I think it was, under Obama in his first full year as president. Wow. The entire amount of extra taxes found to be owed by this class of people who together make a trillion dollars almost and average 30 million bucks each is 5.4 million dollars. Uh, wow. Basically under Donald Trump, enforcement of the tax law at the top has largely stopped. 
And at the same time, as I write in my piece, there's a man serving uh, who was sentenced to 50 years, a hungry, homeless man, 50 years for stealing a slice of pizza. And the U.S. Supreme Court has said sentences like that are reasonable. Uh, Donald is part of a group of people who think they're special. They're above the law. They don't have to play by these rules. The um, uh, the New York Times points out that uh, there are echoes of the way that his father did business uh, in this in, ca in the case against Trump's company echoes of his father's tactics on taxes. The first criminal prosecution involving the former president's business harkens back to Fred Trump's 16,135 purchase of boilers in the 1990s, which he had sort of allowed other people to take a cut of as untaxed compensation uh, and and a whole bunch of sort of corner cutting that was laid bare in the Times investigation that that appears to have been uh, started long before uh, Donald Trump took over the, the company. Well, that's why it's important to recognize this is the first indictment. It is not the last indictment, and there are likely going to be others. And if Alan was getting these deals, then what kind of deals were Don Jr. and Eric and Ivanka and Donald himself getting to underreport or misreport their income? And we just haven't seen those brought yet. 